Hetepu, this is Kasank Ma Keparu with another video for you. I want to greet everybody. Assalamu alaikum, namaste, haru nefer, hetepu. Today I want to talk about the 42 negative confessions of Ma'at. Now there's a lot of people online making videos about these 42 negative confessions and it kind of frustrates me because none of them know what they're really talking about the origin of these 42 confessions, what they really mean, did the Egyptians or the Kemetic people actually follow them, so on and so forth. So today I want to clear all of this up and give you an explanation of Ma'at, Tehuti, and Sebek, and how the 42 laws or 42 negative confessions of Ma'at relate to the Ten Commandments. So let's go right into this. I found this blog online, which I think is a really good source. You can see the hieroglyphic of Ma'at holding the Ankh and the, the feather. Now, as I go through here, you see uh, Ma'at and then you see Sebek, a little bit of information. Sebek also goes by the name of Anubis, and this is the judgment scene. And more importantly, we have the 42 divine principles of Ma'at come from Wallace Budge's Book of the Dead. These were um, taken out of, I believe, the Book of Annie, um, uh, and he uh, was a, a person of importance who passed away, and they created this book for him, which contained the 42 negative confessions, okay? Um, and usually these were written on papyrus, and as you know, this is Tha uh, or Tehuti here. Now, if you read some of these, You'll have, I have not committed sin, I have not committed robbery and violence, I have not stolen, I have not slain men or women, I have not stolen food, I have not swindled offerings, I have not stolen from the gods, I have not told lies, I have not carried away. So the idea is you go before Osir or Osiris, the judgment scene, and you would recite these 42 negative confessions, and you would state them as, I have not now contrast these 42 laws with the 10 commandments which are only 10 you shall have no other god before me you shall not make idols you shall not take the name of the lord your god in vain uh, remember the sabbath day to keep it holy honor your father and your mother you shall not murder you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor and you shall not covet thy neighbor's wife, I believe. Now, of course, you know, these are only 10, and they were taken directly from uh, Ma'at's 42 negative confessions. But what you'll notice here is that some of these um, negative confessions are, are very uh, specific, dealing with certain things like the um, nature, the ecology, um, where it talks about not polluting the waters, you know, um, you know, um, not not. I have not exaggerated my words when speaking. Um, I have not caused disruption of peace. I have not disobeyed the laws. And I have not stolen from or disrespected the deceased. I have not taken ch uh, food from children. Okay, so um, this is not a complete interpretation. But as I was saying before, it does get very specific in terms of the time period. Now, these were not meant for the ancient Egyptians to follow. This is only taken from the, the book of Annie. And... Um, for a specific purpose, and it was more like a hymn, what they called, or um, a spell, you know, something like uh, would Budge would use the term spells or hymns, you know, not specifically a spell, I shouldn't say that, but it was more of like the hymn, okay? But too many people on the internet are talking about how we follow these negative confessions and that is not true whatsoever because this represented a paradigm okay a uh, way of thinking a way of acting this is a total left brain way of functioning because the left brain has to have a precedent it has to have some type of paradigm to operate from the left brain is not energetic it is not dynamic in its thinking so that means that it 
cannot think fluidly, all right? So we, as right-brained people, which is most indigenous and people of color, um, were dynamic thinkers, energetic thinkers. As you know, reality is energetic, meaning you can interact with them. The reality has no fixed set of rules that establish it, that, you know, your belief system determines reality. It changes according to your belief system. And modern physics teaches us that reality comes into being the minute the observer has a, uh, an idea or a belief. And we have seen how this affects certain experiments that the subatomic particles take shape or will act as a particle or wave depending upon the expectation of the observer. So we knew this even back in Kemet, which is why um, you will see or not see us having books on things like science, history, religion. We didn't have that because we understood that what Maud said to, to understand truth, you have to live life. So we understood quite clearly that morality and principles of truth are not gathered by having things written down in dogma and followed. Because we knew that individuals, everyone is different and goes through their own set of specific circumstances. This is why the ancient oracle, of uh, the Chinese oracle of Book of I Ching, um, had specific commentary that was tailored specifically for you when you uh, tossed the Chinese coins. There was no religion or I Ching that you would just open the book and read verses or spells or hymns and then just follow them. No you were given a hexagram and a line that was specific to your situation. And in the same thing here is that when you go before the judgment scene and you see Sebek is inspecting the scales, you were held accountable to a specific set of situations or circumstances, which is your soul contract or your pre-life agreement. And this is what, in a way, represented that for, for Annie, okay? It is not something that is a cookie-cutter system that everyone must follow. That is the misconception that most of these people who are professing to be uh, comedic people online or followers of comedic philosophy have gotten wrong. They're going around talking about this nonsense about, yes, the Ten Commandments were stolen from the 42 Negative Confessions, and we had more uh, commandments or confessions that we adhered to. And they used that as a way to prop themselves up and make themselves feel good, not realizing that this was not followed by the Egyptian people, because the Egyptian people understood morality um, had to have a truth and a measure. So let's get down to that, all right? Let's go back up here. And what we have here is Ma'at. Ma'at stood for truth, justice, balance, reciprocity, okay, um, abundance. But the, the, the paramount thing is truth. She was the law. But the law, as far as neg the negative confessions, could not be administered arbitrarily. It had to be very, very specific to your cer cer certain sets of situations. So how do you administer that? You have to get to the heart of the person. You have to understand their motivations of why they did certain things through an oracle. And who is the supreme oracle in ancient Egypt, Kemet? It is not Sebek, because Sebek deals with left brain, uh, concrete thinking. So you have to go directly to Tehuti, Thoth. And Thoth would be the measure of truth. Ma'at is the law, truth and thought Tehuti's wisdom and the measure of truth. Ma'at is nothing without Tehuti. You cannot have the law without a means to administer the law fairly and justly. So Ma'at is the oracle that can see the motivation behind a person's actions so that it can be judged fairly according to the law. Um, Osir or Osiris is the judge. 
All right, Mazda Law, again, and to Houthi is the administrative law as an oracle system. This is how we operated in Kemet. We did not say everyone must follow these 42 commandments and this dogma, as you'll see in modern religions like the, uh, the, the Judaism, Catholicism, and Christianity, where you are supposed to just follow the entire book, and the book is like a history book. That's the way they treat it. And everything is supposed to apply to you. That is nonsense. And, and given the fact that the book was written thousands of years ago and has references to cows and hay, hay and locusts and bricks, it's, it's outdated. It doesn't apply to you. But when we look at things like the I Ching and the way the Egyptian people saw morality and reality as energetic that you interact with and it, it's dynamic, they understood that you couldn't write these things in a book and then follow them because that would lead to all kinds of, of diversions from the truth. People would then be slaves to dogma. They would become fanatical in their thinking. They wouldn't be fluid. They wouldn't be understanding. And again, we understood according to our judicial system in Kemet that you could not understand the motivation of a person, why they did the things they did without first going to the oracle system. We base so much on Sebek on facts, but, but it could be a fact, but not necessarily true. You could walk in, the person is holding a gun, a smoking gun, and their wife is on the ground, um, dead from a shot in the back, and the facts are there. Yes, he's there, he's holding a smoking gun, his wife is on the floor with a shot in her back. Those are facts. But the truth is, did he kill her or not? You don't know the truth. Because in order to devise the truth, you'd have to know what's going on in that person's head holding the gun. He may have walked in there um, 15 seconds prior and picked up the gun and looked and said, oh my God, who killed my wife? But from your perspective, your observation, you are assembling facts to, to a certain conclusion that is incorrect. And this is because we're so used to concrete thinking. We're so used to elevating the left brain and the idea of facts equal truth that we as a society have gone downhill and criminals who should be behind bars walk the streets and innocent people who should have been let go and proven innocent are in jail behind bars doing two consecutive lifetime um, sentences. This is why we've got to go back and start to understand the ancient ways. We have to understand that Mott symbolizes right brain thinking, uh, Sebek symbolizes left brain thinking, and then Tehuti is the stilling of the thought process, or Jehuti, so that wisdom and knowledge can come to you from God, um, from source. Because it's only when you still the thought process can you intuit wisdom and knowledge, and you can then have a measure on, on how to apply the law. So I hope this makes sense to you of how um, we are screwed up as a society. Our judicial system is not about um, dispensing justice. It is screwed up. And these 42 negative confessions that you see people online talking so much about um, were not practiced by the ancient Egyptian people. It was just a hymn. And you know the Egyptians are really good on puns or story within the story. That's a way of right brain thinking. Um, and just because this came out of the Book of the Dead or the Book of Coming Forth by Day and Night does not mean that this is something that was widespread in practice. As I said, it was put together specifically for Annie and um, not for the entire Egyptian people. Let's get that straight. Because we did not um, have adherence to things that were written in stone. We were more fluid in our thinking and understanding. So um, if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel if this is your first time watching. And this is Kasankh Ma Keperu, son of Ma'at and Tehuti. 
and Amun Ra.